Mrs. Polyfax picked up a spoon from the dazzling white tablecloth and beamed at the waiter who was filling her coffee cup. Thank you, she said, glancing down at a plate that she had heaped with papaya and watermelon from the buffet. And as he left, she thought happily, It's begun. I'm here. And in only a few more hours, I'll be entering China. She had arrived in Hong Kong the night before, after what seemed like days of travel, and her first glimpse of the Orient had been deeply satisfying. The plane had begun its descent over a fairyland harbor of boats outlined in delicate colored lights. The shapes of mountains had drifted past the window, now and then exposing clusters of tiny white lights at their base. Villages, presumably, before the harbor suddenly reappeared, enchantingly toy-like from the sky. There had been a young woman to meet her at the Kai Tak Air Terminal, and this had also been a pleasant surprise. A representative of Markham Tours, who introduced herself as Miss Chu, efficiently bundled both her and her suitcase into a car, and told her that she would personally appear in the hotel lobby at eleven the next morning to introduce them all to Mr. Lee, their China Travel Service Guide. It had been very soothing to be under the protective wing of Markham Tours, because Mrs. Polyfax's major concern had been to find a bed and sleep in it for as long as possible. Two nights in the air, her body did not yield itself happily to plane seats, had reduced her senses to a state of numbness. After flying across the United States and then across the Pacific, she felt that nothing could excite her except bed.' 